Um, my name is Shannon Stefanacci and I am with Pick and Boots Vintage down in Fort Myers, Florida. I was just on a minute ago, but my moderator said she didn't see me, so I'm popping on again. If I was on early, you saw it. Please bear with me as I start again. So anyway, um, we are going to be working on this fun little cabinet right here. I've already white lightninged it, painted it, did a little bit of blending, and I'm going to use the new Bells and Whistles rice papers. We're going to decoupage it on and I'm going to show you a creative way to use the um, the decoupage papers. So let's get started. Here we are going to be using the rice papers. This one is the blue and yellow floral. Now they come in squares so I could put it on like this, but that's kind of boring. So what I want to do is I want to do um, something a little bit more fun and creative. So take a minute and write in the comments where you're from and what you think I'm going to do with these papers. I had originally intended to do for today, but um, I thought it would be fun. Let's see if that works. There we go. Okay. I went ahead and I cut them out into pieces because this is more fun and you can do more with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strategically place these on, decoupage them, and I'm going to show you what we can do with these white ones. Now I went ahead and blended this. It's not perfect blending, but when you're going to be doing something over it, whether it be a stencil, a transfer, or decoupage paper, it doesn't have to be because it'll all be blended together. So you won't really see the lines. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some flowers and decide where I'm going to lay them out. I kind of already played this morning. Now with me, whenever I go live, I always have a plan of action. What am I going to do? Uh, what, you know, what technique am I going to teach? And every time I come in, I get set up, I practice on like, say the back or the side, just so I'm, you know, prepared. It goes wrong. I do it and it turns out awful. And I think, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? So needless to say, this was not what I had planned today, but I'm turning, I, I'm so excited. I love it. So if you're one of those that get started and hate what you're working on and get frustrated and quit, don't worry about it. It happens to me too, but I just go and keep going and think of something new and just adapt. So here's the rice paper already cut apart. Let me see. I'm going to just take clear coat. I'm going to use a clear coat satin and I think I'm going to put this one right here. So I'm just going to put a thin layer of the clear coat right here. You want to make sure it's a thin layer because if it's too thick, you can get bubbles and wrinkles. And then you just simply push it on. And it's okay if you get the clear coat around this because when I'm done, I'm going to be clear coating the whole entire project anyway. So I'm going to put that on. I'm going to take, run my clear coat around just the edge for right now just to make sure I have it properly, properly on. And one layer real quick over it. And there we go. So this is step one. Now here is another one that I cut out and I'm going to put it um, right up here because I think that kind of balances out pretty good. Simply just taking a little artist brush, nothing fancy, applying a nice thin but even layer of the clear coat and I'm going to stick my flower on. Let's see, like this. Put it down. Then I'm going to take my brush and make sure I have the edges down. And then lightly go over the whole thing. The nice thing about the rice papers is the rice papers are a little bit thicker than paper or napkins. And when you do decoupage those, these you can manipulate a little bit um, more harder or sturdier. They they'll 
they just wear better when you're putting this stuff on. So here we go. So these are the start of the creative way to use your decoupage rice papers. Cut it apart. Let's see, where did I put that? I was looking to see where I put my cut piece. Can't find it right the second. So we're just going to keep going. So now this one also has some white ones. Now the white ones are pretty, but they're kind of kind of boring. So we're going to, I'm going to show you a cute, cool way to dress these up. I just first need to decide where I want to put it. I think I might want to put it just right. Here. Well, I'm going to put it, put him right here. I'm going to add some more to the bottom. So, and I'm just going to overlap. Stick that down. Now the white kind of sticks out pretty good, doesn't it? So what I'm going to do now, I could leave it white, but that's kind of boring to me. So I'm going to have a little fun. What I did was I took some antebellum blue and a lot of water, very, very little paint and a lot of water. So probably one eighth paint, seven eighth water. And I mixed it up. And now I have this runny, let me get closer to the camera, really runny watercolor paint. What I'm going to do is I'm going to simply paint in the flower, turning it a darker blue than these flowers here. It's just like watercoloring. So now I have a blue, a kind of a greenish, and then that pale yellow. I can also use this to highlight or add some dimension to the flowers that are currently there. See that? So the camera's kind of far away, um, but when I'm done, I'll be taking pictures. I'll post them on my Facebook page. So if you don't follow me and you want to see this finished project, Pick and Boots Vintage on Facebook. Okay, so now what I'm, I'm going to show you, I want to add a little bit of Gravel Road. Gravel Road is one of my favorite colors. I like Annabelle and Blue, Gravel Road, Coffee Bean. I love those deep, dark, warm colors. Those are my favorite. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit, very little. I simply dip my brush in. I'm going to put it in this little cup. Kind of dab it. Then I'm going to take my Mr. Bottle. I know everybody has a Mr. Bottle, right? Definitely need that when you're blending with the chalk mineral paint. And I'm going to swirl it around and it makes it very liquidy. I'm just going to use a little bit of shading on the blue flowers. And it's very, very subtle. But it adds a little bit of dimension to the flowers because right now they're, they're like green and black but now there's just a little bit of gray in there just for some shading from the middle of the flower put a little bit back on this one this one just some random shading just add a little bit of dimension so you can do that with whatever color you like um so let's see should I do another one? I, I don't want to put too many on. Sometimes I feel like it could go overboard. Maybe, maybe we'll do, uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I add some more? I guess I could save them for the side, but these are just so fun to play with. Maybe I'll put another one. Maybe I'll overlay one right here. My clear coat, I'll put it right here. Oops, just a very thin, Put this on. So you can layer, you can cut them out, and you can put them strategically wherever you want. These are so fun to play with. And the, the, um, the rice papers come in several different designs. You can pick them up at your local retailer, and they are so versatile. So I'm gonna, I probably will leave this one white because I do like that. And maybe let's see. Um, I don't know. Should I put this one there? Let's see. There's a little stick. Yeah, I think I'm going to. I like this color white. So I'm going to put 
put that there and I'm going to now the paper kind of goes over the line of the cabinet so I can either put it glue it to the top take my razor blade and cut it across or I can simply fold it down into the and just lay it down on the edge of my door. There we go. Ta-da! Okay, so this is something that you can do with the rice papers. You can be as creative, creative as you want. You can cut them apart, you can mix them. These, let me grab that paper real quick because I have some really cute, oh, here it is, the, the fan glue it on the ground. So you don't always have to use them like this. Cut them apart and do something creative with them. Like this dragonfly. I'll probably go back, cut out a dragonfly, and have him flying across. Um, and there's the butterfly, like I said. Let me get these closer so you can see. See how cute the little dragonfly is? And then the butterfly is right here, um, right down here. So how cute would these be? Uh, cut out, put on here, and then add a little bit watercolor, some of the, maybe some soft pinks or something in here on the butterfly that'd be really cute but so these are very very versatile and look how they're very sturdy and they come in a bunch of patterns so um any questions on the decoupage the cutting apart just let me know and you can reply in the comments and i will be happy to answer them I want to say thank you for joining me today. I know this was short and sweet, but I went ahead and cut out the papers ahead of time just because. Um, actually, why not? We have some time. Let's cut out a dragonfly. Bear with me. Now, he is kind of small, so I need to put my glasses on for this. The dragonfly, in this pattern, I feel kind of gets lost. So I think if I cut him out and make him solo, uh, he will be better appreciated. So now this will not be perfect as I'm cutting him. Notice I had to put my glasses on to see. <laughs> That's what happens when you hit over 45. You have to get readers, unfortunately. If you are over 45 and you don't have to have readers, you are one lucky person. And if you accidentally cut the wings off or something, it's okay, because you can just glue it together on your piece and lay it over and you'll never know. So in the background of one of his wings is part of a flower. I'm just not gonna pay any attention to that. I'm just gonna let it stay there. Okay, almost done. He is just too cute. I wanna make sure I put him on somewhere. All right, this is very, he's very skinny here. All right, so here he is, let me show you. Little dragonfly. Notice I didn't cut it out perfectly, but that's okay, because once I get it on, you, will, you won't even really notice. So now the big thing is where do I put him? So I could put him here, I could have him here, I can fly him towards the flowers. Um, I think I'm gonna put him right here. He needs to have his own little spotlight and not be lost in the flowers. Now you notice I'm pushing down on it with the clear coat. Just because he's so fragile, I feel if I go back and forth, I might ruin him. Now that he's down, I could lightly give him the once over. So there is the little dragonfly. How cute is he? So. We put the flowers on, we added a dragonfly. There are other elements you can cut out from these papers. You can mix the papers whatever way you want to do it. But this is just one way you can use these papers. So now what I'm going to do is I will take clear coat and I'm going to put it over the whole entire piece. This will seal the paint and it will seal the rice paper on my project. And it doesn't have to be a thick coat. It's supposed to be a nice thin coat, 
Some people will use the blue sponge, some people use a brush. I'm making sure I'm going lightly over my decoupage rice paper. Now I have other flowers that are left over on the paper, so I will strategically place them around the other sides of the cabinet. Make sure I have it all coated. There we go. Now once this dries, you won't see all the clear coat because the clear coat does go on and it's white. This is the satin. This is the one that I always like to use. I like to use the satin because it dries to a nice finish. So here we go. Um, I'm all done with the front. I'll be doing the sides later and I will post pictures on my Pick and Boots Vintage Facebook page. Thank you for joining me and um, I will see you next month. Okay, take care. We'll